We as a, a public think that raccoons are a very clever species, but they also have a reputation for being troublemakers. Raccoons can be quite destructive, but it is a part of who they are and they've evolved this way. You know, as a researcher, I, I can appreciate that, but it definitely it kind of exceeded my expectations and they always keep you on your toes. My name is Lauren Stanton and I study animal behavior and cognition and right now I'm studying the cognition of raccoons. In the early 1900s, they had all these great hypotheses about the intelligence of raccoons. But what happened was that they were kind of a handful to deal with in the lab and so after a few years, researchers kind of threw in the towel. But it hasn't been until more recently that we're realizing how successful these animals are. They have really wide distributions and expanding populations, and they're doing this even in the face of environmental change. And so I'm in the Animal Behavior and Cognition Lab, and we're really interested in studying them and trying to understand if their cognition aids in being so successful. So raccoons use their hands to kind of see their environment. They have really sensitive forepaws and they forage in riverbeds where the water might be murky. So they use their forepaws to find food. And I had thought that, you know, they might know about the properties of water because they evolved with rivers and streams. So I decided to use the Aesop's Fable experiment. It was inspired by Aesop's classic fable, The Crow and the Pitcher. So in the story, the crow understood I need to raise the water level up. I need to displace that water by using stones. And so we do this with animals where we train them to drop stones into an object that contains water and a floating, a really yummy food reward. And then you really get at their cognition and their causal understanding by giving them different choices. So perhaps a small stone versus a big stone. Or if you do a solid object versus a hollow object or a heavy object versus a light object. And so I had these predictions they were gonna perform very much like other species. However, that's not what I found. They would often pick up all of the objects that they could and just try to dump them into the tube at one time when they would pick the floating ball over the sinking ball, they'd drop it into the tube and then they'd stand on top of the tube and just spin the ball. And they were able to get their marshmallow reward without actually using the object that I had predicted and intended for them to use. And so it seemed like raccoons were very flexible in the choices that they made. And I think it really speaks to the character of raccoons. We first began with this Aesop's Fable experiment, and now we're moving on to doing different types of problem-solving experiments, giving them different cognitive tasks and seeing how they perform at these tasks. In 2015, we started the University of Wyoming Raccoon Project. Our goal is to trap as many individuals as we can in this population. And then we know who that individual is and we can track their progress across our different experiments. And so once we've trapped a raccoon, we will process it, which means we immobilize it in order to take biological samples of interest for our project. We always take vitals, including heart rate, rest rate, and uh, temperature. But then we also give them a pit tag, and it's very much like a microchip that you would use, you know, in a dog or a cat. And so when we scan the raccoons, uh, they each have their own unique ID, and this allows us to identify individuals. And so it's a really, really helpful tool when we're doing uh, cognition in the wild experiments. So the next thing was giving them different puzzle boxes. So the puzzle box experiment is a box that has food inside of it and it's latched and it's closed and the idea is to look at how raccoons are able to problem solve in order to open the door so that they can receive the food from inside. It's a bolt latch that when it's locked, the animal can't access it by grabbing at the door or biting at the door. They have to actually grab the knob and push it to the right to pop the door open. In the first version of our puzzle box, we put many doors and many locks that were all uniform, and the idea was to study their learning by looking at how long it took them to open the first door to the second to the third. With our second device, there are multiple different problems on this box. There are multiple different latches, and so we wanted to see if we start with one challenge, can you adjust your behavior and adjust your technique to open this new box? And that allows us to, to get a, an assessment of their behavioral flexibility. So we monitor the puzzle boxes by setting up these infrared cameras. We're looking at their learning speed, we're looking at the different types of behaviors that they direct towards the puzzle box that they use when they're problem solving. So right now we are going back and reviewing all of our video footage and quantifying their progress in the experiments. 
So some individuals, you know, chose not to participate in our experiments. Some individuals may have only found one or two solutions, but then we did see other raccoons who opened all of the doors and who found all of the solution types. Lemongrass, for example, would come every night and she would open every door of our puzzle boxes. And so it was pretty clear that she had solved this problem. There were times where we might have three male raccoons show up at the puzzle box at one time, or other times we saw a mom come with a group of four kids. And so we're really interested in trying to understand how the social context may have affected their problem-solving ability or their performance. So right now we're still coding the videos from our puzzle box experiments, but the next thing we're going to do is look at their learning in a different way. So this is the next cognitive experiment we're going to be taking into the field with our wild raccoons here in Laramie. This device has an automated feeder in it, and so when the raccoons push a correct button, they will get an automatically released food reward. Let's say if the animal had the left button correct first, we're then gonna switch it and we're gonna make the right button correct. So this is a very classic test of behavioral flexibility. And we're gonna look at the number of incorrect button pushes the animal makes while it sticks with that initial correct choice before it switches its behavior and it starts picking the other option. Raccoons always seem to behave in ways that I don't expect, but I don't know if I would call a raccoon a, a trash panda or a bandit, perhaps. To a raccoon, they're not being mischievous. They are, they are just, they're being raccoons. They are just surviving and they're thriving in these environments that we've made. I think that their cognition can help them find these resources and to uh, figure out the best ways to exploit them. And I think that contributes to, to how successful they are. Hey there, this is Luke Groskin, video producer for Science Friday. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then you'll love our other science documentaries. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and then join our growing community of supporters on Patreon.